Praise the Lord. Breakfast with the bishop, Brother Gary. Enjoying a cup of coffee. I hope you're enjoying your day. Every day in God is precious. Every day in life is precious. And I'm enjoying it. I want to go right to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And read verse 13 to you. Share that little uh, nugget today so that you can start your day, your week. Again, this, this show comes to different places at different times. I used to think we were going to do it every Monday morning. And we try to do that, but uh, it doesn't get out until who knows when. Some people pick me up and the show's a year old. That's okay, as long as they get it and get blessed. I want to be a blessing, not anything else. Listen to what 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says. There is no temptation that takes you, but that's not common to man. But God is faithful. Listen to that. God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above what you're able but will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. There's nothing, nothing can happen. Isaiah tells us no weapon formed against us can harm us. But another place, my hand is on you, says the Lord. My hand is on you for good. Another place, he says, you are the sheep, sheep of my pasture. Another place, he says, I am the good shepherd. Another place and another place. And it goes on and on and on. He's always telling them that he's faithful. He's there. Sometimes it doesn't seem so. Uh, there was an old song I used to sing when I first got saved. Sometimes it seems God's a million miles away. Too busy for a creature such as I. Then I'll forget. I'll, 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 I'll cut said, but the eyes of Jesus are upon each footstep that I take. His hand is near and on me when I pray. And on and on it goes. And I, I don't want to sing the whole song that would go on. I want you to get the point today. It may seem that God has left us. I feel that same way sometimes. God, where are you? Even Jesus on the cross cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which is the Hebrew. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The human side of him cried out. Well, there's always a reason for that. But God was faithful, raised him from the dead, seated him at the right hand, gave him all power, did all these things. Then he comes to us and says, now, I'm going to do the same for you. Jesus tells us in John 17, Father, glorify them with the glory you gave me. All power you gave me, I give them. Romans 8 said uh, that he gave, God gave everything to Jesus. Jesus made us heirs and joint heirs. You can read Romans 8, 8 through 15, 16 in there, and that tells you that. But there is no temptation that's not common to man. God, you're not the only one, dear, dear sister, dear brother. Uh, you're not the only one that goes through these things. And sometimes I'm guilty. I think, man, all these other preachers, they're, they're getting blessed, and they're doing good, and Man, I, I'm getting old, and I can barely walk, and I can't make my bills, and I'm a, yeah, a pity party. Isn't that a pity party? Then I have to stop and say, but wait. God is faithful. He will not suffer me. He'll not allow me to be tempted above what I'm able to bear. So I must be able to bear the thing I'm going through. So it is with you. I want you to take heart. Let your faith arise. Let your trust in God arise. Let your love in God arise. He's tempting you or allowing you to be tempted. But it's not more than you can handle. He never overloads us to the breaking point. Uh, how many nowadays, especially, we can put too many electrical appliances on a, on a circuit. Pop, you lose power. Not, no, you just had a circuit breaker blow. It's a safety valve to let you know you got too many things going in one direction. And when you begin to move them around and balance your load, stagger things and get things around, then all of a sudden everything runs smoothly again. So it is with God. Uh, David, when he killed the giant, there were four other stones he had in his pouch because there were four other giants. And you read later on, and, and they all died. But David didn't kill them all that day and didn't kill them all at once. You may not have been able to. Don't don't tackle all your problems at the same time. But learn how to deal with one thing at a time, knowing that God doesn't expect you 
to do all these things. He doesn't tempt you with any anything that you can't bear. He doesn't allow those things to come upon you that you're not able to take care of it. But he does, with your temptation, make a way of escape. Now, I don't always find that way out. But I want to share this with you. Because by making a way of escape, you're able to bear it. You say, well, how would I make a, a way of escape? A lot of times, it's the way we think of something. I hold this cup up. I can see this cup is half full. Well, I can see it is half empty. Now, whichever way you want to look at it, but if you look at it as half empty, oh my, the next drink I take, I'll be below half, and pretty soon I'll be out of coffee, and boy, that was good coffee, and I'll have to ask my wife or my sis or whoever's got kitchen duty today to, to make coffee so that when I'm through, we can have some, and I'll have to, I'll have, whoa, you can view it as half full and say, man, I got a lot of good coffee here to drink before I run out. See, there's the difference in it. And God will always make a way, a way he will always, <laughs> can't talk, he'll always make a way of escape for you and for me. There's always a way out. Sometimes we get blinded by our carnal mind. We get blinded by the situation, blinded by a little bit of anger, disappointment, sadness, death. Don't let the things, the cares of this life blind you. Don't let them trap you. Don't let yourself be slammed into something. Pray, think, meditate on the Lord. The scripture tells us to meditate daily, to think about what God's doing. He said, if there be any, any of this, any of that, think on these things. It gives you eight of them in Philippians. And so we, we, we can do these things, and God makes a way of escape. I'm not talking about a rapture or death, per se. All of that may or may not be. That's another story. But I'm talking about your everyday life. We're in a place maybe where you can't see any way out. you got more bills than Jimmy Carter's got peanuts. And you, and you think, gee whiz, what are we going to do? Well, we probably can't do anything. What can our God do? Lord, what could you do to help me? And you'd be surprised with some of the things that he's able to come up with that you and I wouldn't even think of. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I want to pray for some as we close. I want, I want to uh, bless all of you, particularly those of you that are going through a, a real time, real crisis with loved ones that have gone to the other side and, and you need angels to come and minister to you and, and all of that. And I don't have time to get into it. I want to be an angel to you today, an angel of, mess, an angel of prayer, an angel of mercy. Uh, through the miracle of technology of the satellites, I can come to you all over the world if you tune in and I want to say a prayer. And it's not a generic prayer, but it's a prayer designed for all of you that have lost a loved one. You're going through sadness and sorrow. I want to dispatch an angel of mercy to you and I want these words to be comforting to you. Uh, all of you out there, every situation you're in that pertains to you too, these are just the special needs today. Father, in your precious name, Lord, we just send. You said he sent an angel. He sent the word. He sent an angel and it healed him. Lord, I send an angel. You said we could send the angels. You could call on 10,000 angels and he'd pick you up. I send an angel to each one, at least one angel. Lord, whatever they need, I send it to each one that's in need today, that's hurting from the loss of mom, dad, friend, loved one, husband, wife, daughter, son, I can name them all. Uh, I, I just send a word, Lord, of comfort, a word of strength, a word of peace, a word of conciliation to each one that needs these things according to their need. Lord, you're magnificent and you're mighty. You know exactly who to bring to where. I don't. I can just pray. But Lord, I, I take the scriptures and I send an angel to each need in Jesus' name. Lord, we love the body of Christ and we love these people, Lord. You died for them. You love them. I love them. Father, in your mighty name, make this prayer be universal to all who need it. In Jesus' name, amen. Till next week, God bless. Bishop Gary, love you.